From Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny program with his special guest, Mrs. Edgar Bergen, presented by Lucky Strike. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. Well, here it is, a week before Christmas, and I haven't even started to do my shopping yet. You know, I guess it's because, I don't know, every year it's such a problem for me. I have so many people that I have to remember. You know, my cast, my staff, there's Don Wilson, and there's Dennis Day, and then there's Rochester. You see, Rochester is been working for me for over 18 years, and it's so hard to know what to get for him. He's got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Don Wilson, of course. Uh, his wife uh, helped me a little bit on that. She told me that he wanted a shirt, and she told me his size, too. It was 1633. See, <laughs> I mean, where can you find a shirt with a 33 neck and a 16 sleeve. <laughs> then, of course, they're my orchestra boys. I always exchange gifts every year with them, and uh, they've already uh, given me mine. They sent me, the boys did, they sent me the most beautiful five-carat diamond ring that you've ever seen. I got it already. The ring came, and there was no card in it or anything, but I knew it was for my musicians, when the police came and took it back. <laughs> Fortunately, in our next musical arrangement, the clarinet player has a 10-year rest. <laughs> and of course, Remley, you know, Frank Remley, my guitar player, every year I, I always buy him a bottle of bourbon, but uh, his doctor absolutely refuses to allow him to touch liquor this year, you know, so uh, I gave him something else and he was just thrilled. I gave him the name of a new doctor. <laughs> well, to get on with the show, there's something I want to tell you, and I'm quite proud of this. You see, uh, one of my writers, Sam Perrin, and my musical director, Mr. Malin Merrick, got together just a few weeks ago, and they wrote a brand new Christmas song. It's a novelty song called uh, That's How Santa Claus Will Look This Year. The Sportsman Quartet are going to sing it. Oh, and Jack. with the Sportsman... Oh, Jack. I... Jack. Jack, I, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but uh, before the Sportsman come out to do the number, I want you to meet Mr. Enrico Scortaccini. Mr. Scortaccini, how do you do, sir? How do you do? It's my pleasure, sir. Uh, I can't tell you how much I have looked forward to performing on your show tonight. Well, that's it. Uh, you going to perform on the show? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, certainly, Jack. You see, we want to do this number properly, so I took the privilege of hiring Mr. Scortaccini to work with the sportsman. Oh, well, good, good. I mean, you know, we want the number to go right. Yeah, right? we sure yeah. do. Oh, and something else, Jack. Mr. Scortaccini has consented to come on the show for only $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Don? <laughs> I said he's consented to come on for only $1,000. Don, how many times have I told you that the words only and thousand don't go together? <laughs> Look at Don. Excuse me, just a minute. Don, as long as the sportsman quartet are going well, to do why do we need... Look, just a minute, what? Jack. Now, I don't know whether you'll appreciate this or not, but it just so happens that Mr. Scorticini is between tours. Mm -hmm. And the reason he consented to come on for only $1,000 is... Because he likes you so very, very much. Now, couldn't you find somebody who hates me a little? <laughs> I found a lot of people who despise you, but they can't sing. <laughs> oh, that's a bad place, isn't it? <laughs> well, well, now, Jack, look, don't worry about a thing. Everything's going to be all right. Just oh, leave fine. it up to me. Okay. Mr. Scortaccini's really going to make this number. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that's how Santa Claus will look this year. Sung by Mr. Enrico Scortaccini, supported by the Sportsman Quartet.
With a long white beard and a suit of bread And a baby crocket hat on his head That's how Santa Claus will look this year And to get us all of the things we need He will ride the planes on his trusty steed Way out west will be his new frontier With a yippee eye Ho, ho, ho He'll laugh so jolly Ho, ho, ho. So loud and clear. With a long white beard and a suit of bread and a baby crocket hat on his head. That's how old St. Nick will get his Christmas kick. Yes, that's how Santa Claus will look this year. Here he comes. Ho, ho. Here he comes. Ho, ho. Here he comes. Ho, 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 ho. With a jolly laugh and a golden pack full of good old luck. That's what Santa Claus will bring this year. Every lucky strike has a taste you like for the perfect gift. Give lucky strike. Every pop is full of Christmas cheer. With a yippee eye, ho ho ho. You laugh so jolly. With a yippee eye, ho ho ho. So loud and clear. Lucky Strike is smoother, pressure too, and it's so much cleaner through and through. What a cigarette, it's toasted, don't forget. Smoke Lucky Strike throughout this coming year. Make Lucky Strike your smoke this coming year. Ho, 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 ho. Don, a thousand dollars for a ho-ho-ho? That's ridiculous. Well, I thought he was a real bargain. Oh, you did, eh? Well, yeah. the next time you hire somebody without consulting me, you understand? I'm going to wring your size 33 neck. Now go, will you? Go? Yes. Oh, I can't understand, Jack. Doggone it, I try to give a little class to the show. We all... Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that number was written by my two boys. It was recorded by the Dijon sisters, and I hope you will buy the records because my boys are going to have to pay Mr. Scordicini. <laughs> we'll see who gets the last ho, ho, ho. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want you to get the impression that I don't like to play pay for talent because I will if, if the talent merits it. Now, for instance, in, in a short time now, in a few uh, weeks from now, I'm going to do a show where I want to use a ventriloquist as a guest star. And I even got to speak to Edgar Bergen about it. It's because I love the way Mr. Bergen works with his two dummies, you know, Charlie McCarthy and uh, Mortimer Snur, you see. And I had lunch with Mr. Bergen a couple of times. We discussed it. And about three days ago, I had an appointment to meet him at his house. <laughs> Mr. Bergen's residence. Oh, it's you, Mr. Bergen. Yeah. Yeah. If he comes, I will tell him to wait. Yeah. Single bell, single bell, singing all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse rope and sleigh. Root hoot de hoot. <laughs> Come in, come in. Uh, how do you do? I'm Jack Benny. I have an appointment with Mr. Bergen. Oh, yeah, I know. Mr. Bergen just called on the telephone. He he'll be home here pretty soon. Uh, uh, won't you come in and wait? No, no, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a nice house. <clears throat> My, what a, what a beautiful portrait of Mrs. Bergen. Yeah, it is. Look at this. <clears throat> to Edgar Bergen from Gustav. Hmm, <laughs> an autographed picture from the King of Sweden. Mr. Bergen must be quite proud of this. Huh? Oh, yeah, by Yemeni, he's very proud of it. Uh, Mr. Bergen is Swedish, you know. 
I know, I know, yeah. I am Swedish, too. <laughs> no. Funny, I... Yeah. <laughs> Funny, I thought you came from French Morocco. <laughs> uh, Mr. Benny, would you like to have me tell Mrs. Bergen that you're here? Oh, oh is Mrs. Bergen home? Yeah, oh, I yes, would tell yes. her. Would you tell her I'm here, please? Well, here's this book that George Burns wrote. I love her, that's why. It's a cute title. Remember, he asked me to write the prologue to it, too. Let's see, where is it? Oh, there it is. Prologue by Jack Benny. when I wrote that prologue. Someday I must read the book. <laughs> oh, there you are, Mrs. Bergen. Uh, Mr. Benny is in the living room. Thank you. I'll go right in. Jack! Well, Francis! wonderful. Well, it's good to see you. Edgar mentioned you'd drop by, but he must be detained at the studio rehearsing his radio show. Yes, your, your butler told me he called. Oh, well, the house is a mess. I've been wrapping Christmas packages. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I hope you don't mind waiting. No, no, it's so nice and cozy and Christmassy and everything with the tree. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> and Jack, I want you to know that of all the Christmas cards, yours was the prettiest. Well, I, you got it already. I only mailed it last night. No, no, Jack. I'm talking about the ones you sold us. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> I did have a nice selection this year, I thought. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Well, Jack, I'm awfully sorry Edgar's so late, but if you'd like a drink while you're waiting, I'll ring for Pierre and have him fix you one. No, 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 I don't... Wait a minute. Your butler's name is Pierre? Yes, we picked him up in French Morocco. <laughs> That's the darndest thing I ever heard. Say, Francis, you know... When I was talking to Edgar about being on my show, he told me something about you that I didn't know. Oh, what's that? Well, he told me that you sing. Oh, I don't really sing. Sometimes I entertain at parties, and I've appeared with Edgar a few times. Well, look, at that would be wonderful. I didn't know you sing. Maybe you could sing and, and come on my television show sometime after Edgar does it. Oh, Jack. No, look, at we've got to wait here anyway. Now, come on, let me hear you do a number. I never dreamed you could sing. Were you sure you want to use it? Certainly I do. Come on. Well, all right. All right. Uh, let me see. Well, this is a new number I did at Daryl Zanuck's big party last week. Wait a minute. I didn't hear you sing at, uh, Daryl's party. You weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been there, but I didn't know he was giving a party. <laughs> go ahead, sing, will you? Will you, Francis? You sure you want to hear uh, it? Certainly, go ahead. I'd love to. Okay. I didn't even know you could sing. Go ahead. Believe me. In what you're doing and do What you believe in and like We'll have a new dimension Lots of laughs, a lot less tension Soon you find you found a new way For sleeping sounder Your goal is high But you'll achieve it just as long as you believe That's why each graduation day The guest of honor will always say To be successful in the field you choose Students, all you got to do is believe In what you, <laughs> what you believe in and life will offer love and laughter ever after just believe that's why each graduation day the guest of honor will always say to be successful in the field you choose students all you got to do is believe in what you're doing and do what you believe in and like We'll offer love and laughter Ever after Just believe Believe me, if I'd have known If I'd have known 
that you, if I'd have known that you sang, I, I certainly... Excuse me. Oh. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Bergen. Well, Mr. Bergen isn't home, may I take a message? What? Oh, that's wonderful. Or he'll be very pleased about that. Yes, he'll be down in the morning. Thank you. Bye. Gee, isn't that lucky? Why? What was it? Edgar's five-carat diamond ring. The police got it back. <laughs> oh. Look at, look at, Francis. Getting back to the song. Look, I really, while you were singing, I got an idea for a show. You now did? sit down, oh. and I want to tell you. Oh, now, Mrs. we can do Bergen. this anytime. Oh, Mrs. After Bergen. Where are you, Mrs. Bergen? Come out, come out, wherever you are. Oh, there you are, Mrs. Bergen. Go get your schedule, I found out. Say, can I go down to the city dumps and slug rats with Skinny Dugan? <laughs> Only one hour, Charlie. Now, wait a minute. Come back here. Huh? You've got a stain on that tie. Now, go to your room and get another one. One little stain. One stinking little stain. You've got to have a clean tie to slug rats. <laughs> You know, Jack, sometimes Charlie... Jack? <laughs> What's the matter, Jack? Francis. Francis, that was... That was Charlie McCarthy. Oh, certainly. I don't know why that boy... But always Francis. Put... <laughs> Francis, he's real. What are you talking about? <laughs> Francis, all, all these years, I, I thought he was a dummy. Oh, now, Jack, you've been in show business all your life. How can you be so naive? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't get over. How is this, Mrs. Bergen? <laughs> oh, fine. Hey, come on, let me type. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it still has a sting on it. Hey, are you trying to pick my pocket? No, 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 no. No, I'm sorry. That I don't understand at all. Oh, I never was any good with men's ties. Maybe Mr. Benny will tie it for you. Yeah, would you please? Yeah, it's a little crooked here. Mm. <laughs> uh, 39, he says. There you are. There you are, Charlie. No, uh, thank you, 39. The last time he saw 50 was on a speedometer. <laughs> Get over. I can't get over. Jack, you're not putting on an act, are you? Putting on an act? For years I was so sure that Charlie McCarthy was a dummy that I I was so positive I would have bet fifty cents. <laughs> no. Yes. I was never so baffled in my life. Oh, Mrs. Bergen. I can't. Oh, Mrs. Bergen. I finished my work. I'm ready to collect my quarter. Okay, Mortimer. Oh, no. No, no, no. 
Well, now, here's your quarter. Did you do a good job? Yeah, I got all the leaves. It was tough getting up on the tree, but I got them. <laughs> well, now, what are you going to do with your quarter? Well, I thought maybe I'd, uh, uh, say, who's the yokel? Can we talk in front of him? <laughs> Perfectly all right. Are you sure now? You're sure he ain't an eavesdripper? <laughs> Now, Mortimer, that's Dropper. Well, he, he looks more like a drooper. <laughs> Mortimer, this is Jack Benny. Now, go over and say hello. No. Oh, what was it you told me to say to him? <laughs> I told you to say hello. No, 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 no. Oh, hello. <laughs> You're Mortimer Snurd. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I know I'm Mortimer, but what was that last part he threw at me? Snurd, that's your last name. Mm. You are Mortimer Snurd. Mm. Now, we've told you that hundreds of times. No, yeah, but not today. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, uh, what did you say your name was? I'm, I'm Jack, Jack. Benny. Yes, Jack Benny. I'm confused. I... You're a little hard of thinking, too. <laughs> now, Mortimer, this is Jack Benny, star of stage, screen, radio, and television. Oh, you Jack Benny that on the radio? Yes, yes. On the stage? Yes. <laughs> oh, you got your own television show? I have. <laughs> well, well, Jack Benny. <laughs> well, then you, you've heard of me. No. <laughs> Mortimer, what do you mean? never heard of Jack Benny. Now, how did you get so stupid? Well, I was, I was, uh, I, uh, what was that question? <laughs> I said, how did you get so stupid? Well, I had a good deal and I just couldn't turn it down. <laughs> well, so long, Mr., um, Mr., um, uh, oh, the heck with it. <laughs> Never so confused in my whole life. I just can't figure it out. I was never so oh, baffled. I oh, just dear. can't understand. I'm sorry I was late. Say, I've been thinking about the show and I've got it all worked out. But so Edgar, we have paper Edgar, now, Jack. Edgar, I yeah. want to tell you, I can't, I, I, no, I no. can't understand. Yeah, what... sit down, I'll tell you about yeah. it, Jack. No, See, at the opening of the show. No, no, not there, Jack. Here, here, here. There. <laughs> Cigarette smokers. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Francis, I want to thank you and Edgar both of you for being on my show. Jack, we enjoyed it very much. Yes. Oh, we thought it was lots of fun, Jack. Well, I'm so glad you did. And Edgar, I also want to uh Wish you a lot of success on your own new television show, which starts January 3rd on CBS. That's I right. I wish you a lot of luck on that show. Thank you, Jack. Sure you Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be sure and watch Ann Southern next week. I'll be back in two weeks. And now, on behalf of my sponsor and my entire staff, I want to wish all of you... A very, very Merry Christmas.
Appearing on tonight's program are Harry Stewart, Stevie Wooten, and Louis Mettieri. Remember one week from tonight on this same station. Be sure and watch Ann Southern in Private Secretary. Jack Benny's next television show will be in two weeks. The Jack Benny program has been brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. The Jack Benny program has been selected for viewing by our armed forces overseas. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Don Wilson reminding you people who hire or engage help that experience has proved that handicapped men and women make conscientious, steady, reliable employees. They take a special interest in their jobs. So look over your situation. I'm sure you'll find a spot for a handicapped worker. Thank you.